Hi, I'm Sean from Famous Faces and Funnies. I'm Sebastian America from <laughs> InvestComics.com. I'm Jared from Famous Faces. We are not at Comic-Con, so this is our review show. What's it called, Sebastian? Thick. Yeah. Too bad we're not at Comic-Con. That sucks. It's but sad. we got Capri Sun's back. And Jared's going to review the first book because he wasn't here last week. Yeah. Um, first up is the new Daredevil number one from Bendis and... Wait, who's writing this? Mark Wade. <laughs> Mark Wade! Mark Wade and Paul Rivera. <laughs> who writes things and who draws it are secondary concerns to me. Uh, the story is really good in here. Uh, <laughs> it's an uh, interesting take on Daredevil trying to redeem himself and fix uh, the perception of him after everything that went wrong with Shadowland. <clears throat> like the book. <laughs> uh, it was good until those last two issues. Oh, no. The first issue was awesome. I stand That's by the that. only good issue. Don't buy the rest. Buy the, um, <laughs> the art, on the other hand, I don't really dig it. Uh, it's a little too old school for my tastes. Uh, but overall, a uh, really good book. Uh, a minus. Ooh, we're great stuff. Now. I'm gonna grade stuff. <laughs> I grade stuff for a living. I'm not gonna grade these. Um, <laughs> I want the capture. I have the capture. Yay! All right. It's little. It's a Captain America pity shit. Okay, so, all right, dynamite. We got Butcher Baker Candlestick Maker, the offshoot from the boys that finally gives us the origin of Butcher. Uh, find, we find out that Butcher is in fact a bastard because uh, he comes by it naturally. His dad was a bastard, and now he has picked up the family business. But he's a bastard. I don't want to say a bastard with a heart of gold. He's not a bastard with a heart of gold, but he's... You know the he's road to hell is paved with good intentions? Butcher paved the road to hell <laughs> <laughs> with his good intentions. Good stuff, as always. War of the Green Lanterns, Aftermath, number one of two. Uh, Tony Bedard's writing it. If you saw last week's show, you know how much we all love Tony Bedard. Uh, this is everything that's happening afterwards. It's not focusing on one specific Green Lantern as much as it is the whole core. It's really, really good. Uh, there's a really cool scene with Kyle and uh, John in it, and then there's an also a cool scene with Ganthet. That was kind of funny. But, right there. Oh. But <laughs> yes, it's, it's really, really good. It sets up for uh, what's going to happen with number one in September, even though Sebastian's probably not going to read anything DC related in September. Anymore. I am. You don't like it. I'll read solicits. <laughs> <laughs> Next, we got flash points. I'll get two. I'll get two. I don't want these two. Uh -huh. it, there's four of them, like there were last week. Uh, I I have the okay ones. Sebastian has the really, really good ones. And Dead Man and the Flying Graysons, and everybody's favorite violence filled Legion of Doom. Oh my god, it's so good. That was The first one was okay. This one was awesome. It would make that guy, what's his name? Uh, Edward Norton, really proud in here. It was it's awesome. True. It's Heatwave is badass. Alternate DC History X. <laughs> yes, it is fantastic. Why Pick it up. You gotta oh, read it. So yeah. Read it. yeah. yeah. Oh. It turns out sucks. No matter what, I don't man rules, but Never. it turns out that no more. The one consistent in the DC universe is no matter what reality you're in, Animal Man's life sucks. <laughs> Dead Man and the Flying Graysons. Next issue will be called Dead Man and the Flying Grayson. <laughs> Poor <laughs> Nightwing. It, it's a. Uh, you gotta have an origin sometime, Richard. <laughs> poor, poor. Yeah, I didn't call him Dick. Oh, Aaron would be happy. Hi, Aaron. Hi, Aaron. Uh, now, ha, huh, the Bendis book. Uh, got Avengers you tying into that. Fear Itself. Uh, I'm a pretty big Bendis fan. I like... Not a pretty big game. But... <laughs> <laughs> uh, with... I don't know about you. Uh... <laughs> Our first catastrophe. <laughs> um, yeah, he's the best. Uh, Bacello's art. I'm, a, I'm also a huge fan of Bacello. Um, hopefully, he's doing. Uh, he's not going to keep alternating with Romita on these issues because that's tiresome. Uh, but yeah, this is a really solid issue overall. They're just a team taking on the Hulk down in South America, and they have a hard enough time taking up the Hulk on their own when he's not super powered by a uh, Asgardian hammer, but. Uh, so, obviously he is, and that leads a whole new set of troubles. Supposedly, Ramita's working on Kick-Ass. Supposedly. We'll see about that. That's, is he kicking ass on Kick-Ass? 
Uh, I think this is yours again, Jared. Is you? Is me? You got two in a row. Uh, Invisible Iron Man. This definitely takes. Uh, this picks up right where Fear Yourself four left off. Was it four? Was it, it was three? four. Four. All right, where Fear Yourself number four left off. Um, Tony Stark's made a pretty big sacrifice to get the attention of Odin, and uh, Odin deems it a worthy sacrifice, so he lets Tony hang out with the dwarves that made Mjolnir, and he's trying to craft all kinds of weapons for his buddies back on Earth. I'm a hobbit, not a dwarf. It's true. Hobbit day is coming. Yes. I've been dating myself. <laughs> uh, and it's uh, definitely interesting. So you should definitely check this out. It's a bit of a turning point for Iron Man, given everything that's been going on since Demon in a Bottle. All right. Fear Itself, The Home Front. All right, the $3.99 Fear Itself book. The only thing I like better than Speedball is Christos Gage. And when you put Christos Gage and Speedball together, it's like a, a Reese's Peanut Butter Cup. You got Gage in my Speedball. You got Speedball on my Gage. That sounds gross. <laughs> but this is really good. Speedball redeeming, read it. Speedball redeeming himself for everything that led up to the past, what, four years of Marvel storylines. Uh, Which is like three months in Marvel time. And Speedball taken out. It's funny that you've got, you Wait, know, that whole two, uh, 800 characters trying to stop one guy with a hammer and they can't do it. And Speedball is able to at least temporarily hold back, you know, a Tuma by himself. It's not a tumor. No, it is. <laughs> I saw him in the it's book. It's Christos Gage. Read it. Uh, there are other stories in there. I like the Howard Chaykin mm -hmm. one-page things. Um, they're in there. But mostly, this is worth it for the, the Christos Gage speedball cup combo. Agreed. Me again. All right. This is a fanboy's favorite We're cover. not at the convention that everybody it's else is at. cover ever. Look at all those. But if you were at SDCC, you might see a room filled with Power Girls. And... This is, our cameraman is praying to God to see exactly that. You can't see him, and you're lucky. <laughs> it's He's most there, unbecoming. Uh, good story. It was, you know, cute for, for, for a one-off. Had a little potential for something that could have come back up again if they ever get um, Power Girl back into the, the DCNU. She'll be there. Uh, yeah, eventually. But with this little girl right here. That's all right. Help save the day. Go figure. All right. Cosplayers sometimes have to help out. Gotham. Uh, Gates of Gotham. Uh, Batman Gates of Gotham. That's what it's called. Hey. Yes. It's really, really good. Scott Snyder, again, and Kyle Higgins. Scott Snyder just kind of laid out what he thought should happen, and Kyle Higgins is writing it. He's awesome. He's writing Deathstroke and Nightwing when the DC new relaunch thing happens. It's it's really, really good. It involves three families, and you find out a lot more about it. I was very skeptical about this book. Jared told me it was good, and I, I trust him now on any Batman book recommendation. He also told me Detective was good. I know. But this is this is really, really good. If you like his Detective run, check this out. Uh, if you're interested in Nightwing or even the Deathstroke book, check out this guy's writing. He's the next big guy coming up. So. Are you interested in Nightwing? Love me some Nightwing. I guess a dick. Uh, Marvel Universe versus Wolverine. Uh, this is the prequel to uh, the Punisher versus the Marvel Universe, or the way around. Actually, uh, they came out uh, a few months back. It was I just got around to reading that, and it was really good. This is I think doing slightly better than its predecessor, which it's rare that the sequels do better. Um, there's a a chemical compound got released into a uh, the environment, and it starts mutating people into a new breed of humans that are designed to uh, survive in a post-apocalyptic world. Except there's no apocalypse yet, so it's kind of bringing itself around. All dressed up and no way to go. But it's going straight to hell. <laughs> there's not enough <laughs> um, it's, it's, it's It's a really good book. Uh, it's very interesting to see what becomes of certain characters and how they go out, if they go out, uh, if they mutate or not. Uh, it's, it's definitely worth checking out. They're not quite zombies. It's almost more like a 28 Days Later type thing where they still have some functions as they're, they're consumed with one of the terrorists in the pieces. It happens. Alright, another one from Dynamite. We got Warlord of Mars number 8. Boobs. There are boobs. Alright, there's serious boobs. There's always hanging out with Asia Thoris. 
Dejah Thoris is the reason that, you know, Civil War era generals want to go to Mars. Because, <laughs> <laughs> really? You know, Mars has a couple of moons and some nice boobs. <laughs> um, good for that. Yeah, good for that. Um, it's good stuff. I really like this book. The art is gorgeous. Um, I know they got the, you know, there's the Warlord of Mars movie coming out. This is its own separate, more based on the books entity. Uh, I think I like this better than I did the trailer for the movie. If you're not reading this, you should pick it up. If not the issues, pick it up in trades. Great stuff. This is, this is one of my favorites from Dynamite at the moment. And I didn't think it would be. It's another you. It's not you double this up. X Factor. This is the only X I read. Because uh, New Mutants technically doesn't have an X in it. I'll make an X on the cover for you. I'll have to send it back as damage. <laughs> it's Peter David having fun with the mutants that he is just famous for having fun with. It's it's good stuff. You've got pregnant Wolfsbane about to give birth to her. Um, is it required that in that book someone has to get daughter. pregnant every year? Oh, yeah. Not, somebody has to get pregnant or die. But when Maddox gets pregnant. this issue features the return of one of Marvel's classic 70s horror characters with the most unfortunate secret identity name. I don't want to tell you that it's... I don't want to spoil it. Werewolf by Night comes in, but I just spoiled it for you. <laughs> it's good stuff. I know you're really... Oh, no, I can't read it now that I know Werewolf by Night. Read it. Jack good stuff. Oh, Jack Russell. He turns into a wolf. That's, that's that's fantastic. You know Peter David chose him for that reason. <laughs> Walking Dead 87. It's Walking Dead. I did this before. You can't really say too much without spoiling it, but... Again, Kirkman, last page. Damn. It's just... Damn. That, that's all I can say. Pick this up. It's... Yeah. There's there's so much good stuff. Michonne has some cool lines in it. It's... It, damn. It's more what exciting than walking pneumonia. Huh? What do you think about it? it it's damn. I don't even know how to react to that last page. That shouldn't happen. Go on, Kenny X-Men. Alright, um... <laughs> Kenny X-Men, one of the several X titles that I read. Uh, this issue... Focus, I, it's over there. Uh, this issue focuses, obviously, as you can tell from the cover, on the Juggernaut who's been powered up by a hammer. Uh, he's marching straight towards Utopia and burning his way through uh, San Diego on his way. Or San Francisco, sorry. San Diego's on my mind. Um, they get pretty creative. Shh, they get pretty creative with uh, trying to stop him, obviously, because he's much more powerful than normal. Again, kind of like the uh, Avengers title. It's actually pretty much the same as that. It's just a different cast. Uh, so okay. if you like either one, you should definitely check out the other. <laughs> there you go. That's going to be a, a back Avengers of a trade paperback blur. Avengers equals Uncanny X-Men. <laughs> uncanny <laughs> X-Men and Avengers. If you like either one, you should check out the other. Jared Hammond. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Xenoscope, Brimstone. This is their zombie book. Zombie Western. It's, it's good. I don't... It's a lot of that painted art that just comes out. It's it's so dark, so dark that it goes beyond setting a mood and more to the. Eh, who the heck is? So it's it's. Well, that guy's beard. And it's for some reason, the, the thought bubbles are are, are all oddly shaped. Blam blam blam. And you would think. Yeah, I don't know. They're all just kind of pointy. But the story itself is is good, and it's got you know. It's got zombies and the old west. Really. That's worth checking out. That's a cool one. Got a Jerish and Hope. Uh, this issue is a one-shot, single-issue story arc. Uh, it deals a lot with... Uh, candles. Oh, candles going out. <laughs> Poof. Uh, the, uh, a new light appears. Uh, the light's being new mutants who are manifesting powers since Hope's come back. He's blinded by the light. Uh, and they're trying to get out to rescue him. Before whatever happens happens, because normally when the lights have been showing up, it hasn't had the very best uh, consequences. But uh, they're a little late, and it's them dealing with the ramifications of that, how they feel about it, uh, how it impacts the lives of the people around the kid, uh, and it kind of gives them a new resolve to make sure that this doesn't happen again with anyone else. It's a really good kind of touching issue. Is it tying into Schism at all anytime soon? Uh, I think no? the... No. 
issue after next, I think it does. Okay. Okay. I know when they were starting time. Oh, this is mine. Get ready. Lock and key. I love lock and key. I made that quite clear a couple pre or a couple shows ago. Lock and key is amazing. This is the fifth, the start of the fifth volume. It explains how the Omega key is made and everything that happened and what the Omega key does. I don't know where else this series is going to go. This is this is fantastic. Joe Hill, you are awesome. I can't re wait to read the Cape next week. If it's anything as good as this, I read the one shot and it was awesome. I can't wait for the second issue. If you're not reading this, please pick up the graphic novels and catch up. This is one of the best independent books coming out. Uh, this is for Sebastian because we know how much he loves the 52 relaunch. <laughs> they, they made this just for him. They did. Uh, this weekend we he are salt having... salt in the wound special. <laughs> this weekend at Famous Faces and Funnies, July 22nd and 23rd, we are having Not at Comic Con. We will be giving these away. We have a whole bunch of free swag to give away. All weekend we're going to have a TV showing trailers and stuff. We're going to have artists here on Saturdays doing sketches. We're going to have a whole bunch of stuff going on. We're going to have sales on stuff. Come in, check it out. We have these books. You can come in, pick them up. They're free. Pick you'll them probably up, point love me them. and laugh. Yeah, you'll love them. There's a 10-page preview of JLA written by Jeff Johns, drawn by Jim Lee. It's awesome. Sebastian will probably hate it because he hates anything that's new. I do. And almost, right, we're having raffle tickets. They're going to be $5.00. Is for the Strange Tales. This is the first Silver Age appearance of Captain America. It's not Steve Rogers, but it's Captain America. This book is worth a decent amount of money. All the money gone, or all the money you spend on the raffle tickets will go to one of our one of our customers. His son uh, went into a coma, and he has leukemia now. So they're trying to raise all the money they can for him to instead of driving from here to Tampa every day and spending their own money. We're trying to help him out. All the money's going to him. So it's a great cause. Please come in. Even if you don't care, everyone, just buy a raffle ticket. You get to be the hero. Yeah, donate money. Do whatever you can. It's an awesome cause. Hopefully we'll see you this weekend. Bye-bye. All right. We're going to go see Captain America. Oh, yeah, that happened. I forgot about that thing.